Hello everybody, it is Cooper with another tutorial video for you. So I recently posted a video last weekend with a robotic audio effect on the Atlantic Releasing Corporation video and among the comments from people just saying they were happy to see me back were also understandably comments asking for um, how I did the effect that I applied because it's not one that I do very often on my channel. So today I am going to be showing you how I applied that effect. Now the the thing I'm really going to be focusing on is the audio effect. The video effect was something that I came up with just as like a generic, hmm, what would I associate with robotic, I don't know, green, night vision kind of thing. But that's liable to change. What I really would have liked is to apply um, pixelation. But for some reason, that did not work at all on this setup. So I will definitely be paying more attention to the audio effect than the video effect here. And I'm going to start by doing the audio effect in Audacity. So we're going to open that up. And it's going to show up on my other. Oh, nope, it's going to show up here. Good. So I'm going to import just a random um, I don't know what's a good one for me to do let's do let's do this one CBS DVD that's one that I've, I've done before now admittedly this effect is better for things that include voice or noise so I think this logo has music in it, so it might not have been a best choice, but the, the steps will still apply. Now usually when I work with audio, I resample it to 48,000 hertz. Um, that's no big deal if you don't want to do that. That's just my default quality. I usually post videos in 4K with the audio at 48,000 hertz. So, what you need to do before anything is select your audio and then click off of it. Now the reason why we've done that is now Audacity has memorized the exact length of this audio in terms of the seconds, the number of samples, and everything like that. Then we're going to generate some noise. We're going to generate white noise at an amplitude of 0.4 and the duration, as you can see, you don't need to change it because it is now stored the duration of the audio you imported. You want it to be exactly the duration of whatever audio you import. So there's the white noise. And I'm going to duplicate that so that it is three tracks. So now we've got our three white noises and um, ultimately what we need to do is use vocoding but before we do vocoding we need to make this white noise sound robotic so here's what I'm gonna do with the first white noise track you know you just play it normally I'm gonna turn my volume down it might be a little loud you just play it normally it doesn't sound robotic at all you know there's there's supposed to be like a hum so what we're gonna do is apply echo. Now this is something that I have adopted from Sony Vegas. Sony Vegas had a preset called Robot in their echo effect, which basically applied echo so fast that it sounded like a robotic hum. So for one of the tracks, I'm going to apply an echo with a delay of 0 0.008 seconds. So that's only 8 milliseconds. And the decay factor is going to be 0.9. So I'm going to turn my volume down again because there's probably going to be some distortion. And you may be able to now hear that there is a very distinct robotic hum. And I actually did some math on this. That is at a key that is ever so slightly higher 
than be natural, which I think is well suited for most applications. But it also sounded kind of high pitched and shrill. So we're not going to rely on just this to do the robotic hum. We're going to go down to the next white noise. We will apply echo again, but we're going to set the delay time from 8 milliseconds to 16 milliseconds. So 0.016 seconds with the same decay factor. So when I play this, it sounds exactly like the one that I just made, except that the key is now an octave lower. So doubling the delay of the echo basically kept the same key, but one octave down. And I'm sure people can now see the pattern. So for the last white noise, I'm going to apply echo. And the delay time is going to be 32 milliseconds, or 0 0.032 seconds, with the same decay factor of 0.9. Now, that one, it's a little bit harder to hear the musical pitch because it's very, very close to the lower end of where humans could normally hear sound. But I do like that kind of technical um, distortion that it offers. So I do like to mix those together. Now, it's not a big deal if we mix these tracks together and there's some distortion, which there's going to be, but I do want to, to uh, minimize it a little bit. So all of these tracks are distorted as it is. So we're going to normalize them all. And you could do zero here if you wanted. I usually do negative 0.1 because if you are trying to normalize sound so that there's no clipping at all, then you run the risk of having some accidental clipping at exactly zero decibels. So I usually do negative 0.1, but for this case, it's no big deal because we're just gonna mix them together and put the distortion back anyway. So normalize, you can see that they all became less bright colors, so they became quieter. And then we're going to select all the white noise that we just applied. We're gonna go to tracks, mix and mix and render. So if I play this track, so that is a composite of all of the robotic hums that I just applied. And this is what we want. So now what we're going to do is we now need to actually apply vocoding. So we're going to go to the audio that we imported in the first place. And we are going to, well, first we're going to get rid of solo. And we are going to split up the stereo track if it is a stereo track. If it's a mono track, you don't need to do anything. You can go right on to the next step. But this is stereo, so we're going to split it up. And we're going to get rid of the right half. Now, something to keep in mind is if you happen to have some weird case where the left track and the right track are significantly different, then you should mix them down to like an average track first before you do anything, because ultimately we can only work with one channel from our source material. So we now have a left track from our original audio which, did I already normalize this? I'm gonna do that just in case. I'm gonna normalize that to negative 0.1 as well. And it raised the volume a little bit, okay. So we have the source material on top. We've normalized it to around zero decibels. We've got our crazy robot hum below it, and we are going to make that a stereo track. And now we apply vocoding. So the settings that I have here, which I'm gonna leave on the screen for a little while, are a little bit different from the default. Um, I set the vocoder bands to 60, I think the default is 40. Um, I forget what the default radar needle frequency is, I think it might be 20. 
but changing the settings here, um, you don't have to do that. The default works fine. I got these settings when I was playing around with vocoding, and there's no particular reason for these settings. You know, I thought they sound a little cooler, but I can't distinctly say, you know, if you have 40 bands instead of 60, it's not going to sound like a robot, or you have 30 hertz of the radar needles instead of 20, it's not going to sound like a robot. That's not the case. If you apply the default settings in vocoder, that's fine. If you want to use my settings exactly, then the distance is 20, the output choice is both channels, that you should keep. The number of vocoder bands is 60, the amplitude of the original audio is 100, the amplitude of the white noise is 0, the amplitude of the radar needles is 0, and the frequency of the radar needles is 30 hertz. So we're going to apply that. It's going to take some time. I think vocoding is a pretty hefty effect for Audacity. And we're going to play that. So that clearly, very clearly sounds robotic. We aren't entirely done, but we've done the hard part. The robotic sound is there. So the post-processing that we have to do to make this a little bit um, easier to work with is the first thing we're going to do is apply some reverb with all the default settings. I didn't even bother showing you what they were because they're just the default. And then we're going to apply what's called compression. And compression is really neat. Um, what it does is it keeps the volume of loud sounds as they are, but it raises the volume of quiet sounds. And when you apply vocoding, you may often have instances where you have sound that's mostly quiet, except for some moments where it's particularly loud, like da 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 right? So I apply compression a mild compressor is two to one, so it just applies a little boost to the quiet sounds. The threshold is negative 60 decibels, so that's going to affect basically all the sound we have. Um, all the other settings should be the, the default. I'm going to apply that. And the last thing I'm going to do is just make sure I didn't distort my audio, which I shouldn't, but uh, I'm going to normalize the peak amplitude to negative 0.1, as always. So that is all that I would do to apply the robotic effect to a video. Now, something to keep in mind is that the particular settings I applied may not work for all cases. You may need to apply more compressor. You may need to apply no compressor. Maybe reverb doesn't sound good. You know, so you can tweak this a little bit. It's not, the, the goal isn't to follow it exactly. I just want to show you what I did what I did to make this audio effect work the way it did. So I finished that. You're probably going to be seeing robotic CBS DVD soon. So I'm going to export that as AUG. There we go. And we are done in Audacity. I don't care about saving the changes. Now, the video effect I did in Caden Live. Um, Caden Live, I've only ever gotten to work on Linux. So I think they make versions for Windows, like beta versions. I don't know if they make it for Mac. But I do like Caden Live because it's open source. So it's perfectly free, and it's probably the closest thing you can ever get to Sony Vegas on a Linux system. Now, I am just going to open up the original project that I made and show you how I did it. I don't need the... I don't need my logo in there. 
So, all the video effects that I applied to make this green effect are transform, that just lets this logo fill up a wide screen and makes it visually appealing. I moved it down a little bit. Um, if you're working with a widescreen video, you probably don't need to apply this. If you're working with a full screen video, you probably want to like fit it to width and center it. But that's not part of the robot effect. That's just making it fill the screen. What really matters is what's called color distance. Color distance is an effect that changes the, the uh, value of a pixel to somewhere between white and black. And what you do is you enter a reference color. And if the color is, I think if the color is close to the reference color, it's black because there's no distance. And if it's, if it's close to the opposite of the reference color, it's white because it's further away. But I'm just going to test that for myself. So I'm going to hide colorize for now. Um, and I set this to green. So let's see, things that are closer to green, light green, should be, um, I predict they would be black. And that is what it looks like, yep. So the exact color doesn't matter. What really matters is that you get something that clearly changes the lights and the darks in your reference material but still has reasonably good contrast and you can read everything. And once you apply color distance, oh, I mean, if people want to see the exact color I used, it was this one on the palette, red 170, green 255, blue 127, just for completeness sake. Then I'm going to show you colorize. Now, what colorize does is it's almost like gradient map. It just maps the lightness of your input video to a gradient where the lower end is black, the higher end is white, and in the middle is some color you're choosing. And the color that I chose was a hue of 0.4, which is close to pure green. I think it's a little bit towards the blue end. Um, saturation of 0.7 because we want this to look really bright and artificial. And the lightness was 0.5. So this is liable to change. I really would have liked to apply pixelize, but I want to show you what happens if I do. Pixelize is basically the equivalent of Sony Vegas's Pixel 8. And if I apply it, then it, it really works. It works too well. My video completely disappears. The only time you'll notice this in action is if I set the block size to one, then I get a remarkable four blocks. Um, so I don't know why pixelize doesn't work. I don't know if it's the Linux distribution I'm using or if it's the fact that I'm using my graphics card to render, but I didn't get to apply pixelize this time. And it is something that I hope to get working in the future, but for now I didn't do it. So there we go. That was a video effect for robot. You just, uh, get rid of your original audio and then replace it with your robotic audio. Apply your corner logo if you have one. And I think that covers everything. So thank you guys for watching this tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to say so in the comments. I hope you enjoy applying the robot effect to your videos.